Welcome to the Educause Rising Voices podcast, where we amplify the voices of young professionals in higher education. I'm Wes Johnson, and I'm joined by the amazing, phenomenal... Sarah Buska. Thank you, Wes. (laughs) You're amazing, phenomenal, too. (laughs) And we're your co-hosts for the show. We're also members and friends of the Educause uh, Young Professionals Advisory Committee, so shout out to YPAC. And we are going to be, what are we going to be talking about today, sir? <laughs> Thank you, Wes. Uh, so today, in the true spirit of amplifying the voices of young professionals, we have two new to the field young professionals that we'll hear from today. Before we dive in to introducing them, I want to set the stage a little bit for uh, the topic of the show. So in my past three years of chairing the Educause Young Professionals Advisory Committee, YPAC, one of the questions I received the most from older generations was, what do young folks want right now in a career? What are they looking for? What's bringing them to higher ed? What's keeping them from higher ed? And frankly, how do I attract and retain my talent? So I did a little bit of research on this, and according to the Pew Research Center, from a COVID-19 era trend of quiet quitting to the rise of quit talk hashtag on TikTok, young workers in the United States have reportedly grown disengaged from their jobs and traditional hustle culture. But while young workers are less likely than their older counterparts to express the highest levels of job satisfaction, most, 85%, are at least somewhat satisfied with their job overall. So maybe we'll do some myth busting here today. But really the question is, what are young professionals finding satisfying about their jobs now? And to help elucidate that, I'd love to introduce our two guests for the show today, Arantxa Fernandez and Adriel Mendoza. Arantxa is an IT help desk technician at McKendree University, where she's been working for almost two years. Arantxa also serves as a co-chair of the YPCG, woo, shout out, <laughs> and is an ex officio member of the YPAC. This is her first year on the YPCG, and she's already making a big impact. Next, Adriel Mendoza is a junior cloud security engineer at Madison Area Technical College, MATC. Shout out to Madison, Wisconsin. (laughs) I'm from Madison. Um, In this role, Adriel helps protect student data, organizational technology systems by addressing cyber threats and implementing security controls. Passionate about sharing knowledge, Adriel constantly strives to be the best version of himself. It's great to both have to have you both here. Welcome. Thank you. And so to get us started, I'm gonna start with the Rancho because help desk warriors will always have a special place <laughs> in my heart. We want to know what is your superpower? Um, I would say, I guess, hyper flexibility, kind of like a, um, the wife and the Incredibles, kind of kind of like that. Um, because I Mrs. Think- Incredible is on our show mm-hmm. today. <laughs> but I, uh, I pride myself on being able to adapt to different things and, you know, like the p- pandemic, being able, being able to kind of navigate that. But Yeah, being adaptable in, in your role in particular is quite important. So that's an amazing superpower to have. Uh, Adriel, what about you? Uh, hey, Wes. Uh, so I, I would say um, being patient, honestly. It's something that it's helped me out throughout my life, uh, whether teaching other people or helping others, um, being patient as is something that I guess I've been getting good at now. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to teach us after the episode because sometimes I feel like my patience is running thin uh, half the day. So that's a good skill to have. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put my hand up too. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe this question is for you, Adriel, just to start. What drew you towards working in higher education? Um, so I actually started off as a student intern um, and then was promoted over to a full-time position. Something that I liked about it was the goal is, you know, helping out students, um, supporting them throughout their journey and their education. And that's just something that I, as a student, liked. So giving back to students and other people in the community, um, that's something that drove me to working in higher ed. That's great. And what about you, Aranja? Yeah, so I was 
I'd graduated and I was looking everywhere for a job, big tech companies, and startups, and then I realized that I enjoyed being on a college campus. I was did a lot of student orgs in college, so I thought it would be a good fit for me, um, especially it would be a good pathway to get um, break into the field. So I felt very comfortable in that space. Yeah. And are you similar to Adriel in that you are working at your previous institution or alma mater? No, I'm not. Okay. I started at Maryville University okay. in St. Louis, and then I found my way here to McKendree. And that's close enough, too. So mm-hmm. yes. that's great. Yeah. So uh, I guess I'll start with Adriel, uh, get, switching back to you. So you kind of mentioned that it looks like as a student, you started to build some kind of connection where you wanted to continue with the higher ed mission, et cetera, et cetera. Now that you've kind of been in the role and you've been working at higher ed, higher ed for a little while, is there anything in particular that kind of keeps you coming back? Uh, and, and you're not really, it seems like you're not really seeking anything outside. Maybe I'm wrong, but is there anything in particular that you're like, it's higher ed and that's why I really want to be part of higher ed? Um, I would say I just like the way um, the environment is, the community is. It's really, and you know, welcoming, and and there's a lot of opportunity for growth. Really, uh, something I've noticed throughout the higher ed process is that, at least in, in it's possible for other institutions as well. Um, there's a lot of things that you can, you know, go ahead and improve. Right, a lot of areas for growth, and that's something that, at least in my role, I've been um, involved in 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 helping our organization at least grow in that area. So. Not just that, also sharing the knowledge of, hey, this is what we're doing. Yeah, we definitely love to share in higher ed, which is one of the things I enjoy uh, most uh, about my job as well. So I definitely resonate with that. Arancha, you know, Adriel kind of mentioned that there's opportunities to improve. Are there any things that come to mind for you and your time with higher ed that you think we could work on doing better as a community or maybe just at your institution? Yeah, I think overall, I think really trying to improve cybersecurity um, I was a cybersecurity major, so that's kind of, I think about that thing, those things a lot. Yeah. So I think overall, I think just continuing to improve cybersecurity um, throughout higher ed, because I know they, uh, they like to target um, universities and colleges. So I think really trying to focus on that. Yeah, cybersecurity is such a big and vast thing to to tackle, too. And then there's many other compliance considerations, and then you have to match that to the mission. So, yeah, there's always room to improve and kind of flex that to make sure it fits the culture of the institution. Absolutely. So there's something I heard y'all mention a little bit in our earlier questions about the pandemic. So I'm kind of curious if you'd be willing to speak to how the pandemic affected your time as a student, and then also your time as a young professional entering the higher education workforce. Maybe we'll start with Adriel. The pandemic gave me a different perspective, really, just in life as a general thing. Um, It is something that enjoy life, be thankful for what you have. Uh, Honestly, that's like kind of what I learned throughout it. You know, life was short for certain people in that time. Um, there was also time for self uh, reflecting and, and, and that sort of thing. So as far as that, you know, sort of that, that's probably the biggest effect it had on me. Um, and also moving everything to a remote workspace, a remote learning area, and, and just being remote from friends and family honestly changed just the way that we interact with one another. And um, adapting to that and obviously being patient throughout that process and knowing that eventually there's a way out of this, right? Um, uh, So adapting to that was also another thing uh, that I learned throughout the pandemic. Yeah, that's great. And then Arantia, what about you? Yeah, I think it really put my adaptability to the test. Um, One week, I was going off to spring break and, oh, I'll see you next week. And then all of a sudden we were set home for about a year, year and a half. So it was, it was a lot. <laughs> um, but I also went through a lot of, you know, self-growth and being able to, you know, talk to, you know, 
just find things within myself and being able to, I guess, entertain myself in a way without being able to interact with people in real life. But also it really taught me ways to kind of interact with people over the internet or find things to do and expanded my um, applications that I use and to just to be able to communicate uh, with people. And then professionally, I think moving to Zoom and that really helped me in that development, um, kind of teaching me that kind of stuff before I entered the uh, workforce. Definitely. One curiosity question I have, I think others in our community and listeners might want to know as well is, what is your perception on like working remotely, hybrid work in person? How do you feel about it? Do you have a preference? Does one work better for you? Uh, any thoughts? Uh, maybe Arantxa, if you're willing to continue. Yeah, so I think, I think it's a good mix of both. I think it also depends on the person. I personally wouldn't mind like a hybrid situation. Um, kind of, you know, you're able to work, but also take that day for yourself or, you know, take care of things at home or anything like that. Um, but I also do like being able to interact with people in person every day. So I do enjoy that. But also working from home can help you with self-care and self-love and all that kind of stuff. That's so true. Yes. What do you think, Adriel? Yeah, honestly, I agree with Rancha. Um, just having the option to, to be hybrid is awesome. Uh, you know, you have the interactive piece, you get to see people, you get to interact with others. And then also, yeah, that home side of things like, hey, well, I'm at home, I don't have to travel today, I'm saving money on gas, this sort of thing. Um, but also, you know, you just, you find different ways to interact, you know, your, your, your house and you're finding, Hey, I didn't, didn't have this opportunity to do that over there. Uh, so yeah, it has its benefits. <laughs> Definitely. And um, another curiosity question, thinking about like your peers and friends who are your age, uh, maybe they're working in higher ed, maybe not. Um, well, actually first, how many of your friends and peers are working in higher ed? Is there like, are you the only one or are there a lot of you? I would say there's maybe a handful, maybe there's three of us, but generally people I went to college with, they all went to um, healthcare or big corporation company, but from college, I was the only one. Wow. What about you, Adriel? Yeah, honestly, I'd say the same. Um, most of them did go to corporations. They went straight to the workforce. <laughs> so I don't think they went to the higher ed um, path and they just decided to go with what was there. Why do you think that is? For them, at least I can kind of speak to their point of view. Um, well, their way that they were you know, adapting in the different scopes that they were specializing in. Some of that, there was just more opportunities in that area uh, through organizations that do that on a daily basis. Um, so like in, in cybersecurity, for instance, uh, let's say like incident response that deals with, you know, reviewing certain things and, and going into depth. Um, there's organizations that specialize in having, you know, specialists and professionals in that area rather than like a high, a smaller higher ed uh, institution, right? So at least that's what I saw and that seemed to be true. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my perspective on that. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Thank you. And I know it's hard to kind of posit what your friends might be thinking, but you know, it's sometimes in interesting to get a general pulse. What about you, Arantxa? Yeah, well, I think I, Generally, from the people that I went to college with, I had a little bit more of a, I guess, not enjoyment, but enjoyment in college. So I wanted to go back. Um, but also, I know my friends, they wanted to. You know, one of my friends that went to a big corporation, she, it was, she found a place where they would teach her and like um, really guide her throughout the introduction to the workforce. So, and I think that's where she enjoyed it. Um, 
that. Oh, yeah, that's a great point, too. And I'm thinking about pandemic challenges. And we know from research and, of course, from your own lived experiences that a lot of the traditional kind of you know, internships and things that were available to college students to help prepare them for the workforce were absent during the pandemic. It was really hard to offer those experiences when the world shut down. So that's a really interesting thing to hear, Arantxa, that what drew one of your friends to corporate and not higher ed is that she was offered that opportunity. Interesting. And so kind of keeping on this this note, you you all have been dropping some tidbits to kind of touch on this question. So for senior leaders out there in higher education, if they're wanting to improve the experience for incoming uh, higher ed employees such as yourself or newer in the field employees, are there any tips that you want them to be thinking about to improve that experience as they had folks on board and spend their first two to five years in the field? And Adrian, I'll start with you. One of the things I, at least that I've seen is honestly keeping them involved, right? Uh, just having those opportunities for growth, whether it is internal, or external, it's just something that you, you could be uh, aware of and, and considering that. Another other thing too is at least for newer comers to the higher ed and actually any workforce. Um, it's kind of just monitoring burnout. Um, that's one of the biggest things that at least I experienced when I started. Just because there's so much to learn, uh, you might get fatigued real quick. Uh, so I know it's it's difficult to manage a smaller team if, if you're working on different areas. But uh, honestly, I think that's one of the things maybe uh, to focus on. And if I may kind of drill in a little bit more on that, when you say, because I've heard this before too, like keep us more involved, uh, both ex external and internal, like you have any examples or like thoughts on like what that could look like? Yeah, uh, one, an example could be, say you're working on a project, a team project, um, maybe including them in into a little small piece and say, hey, I'd like your feedback on this or Let's work on this together. Uh, you know, that collaboration piece, uh, having that together. And I think, that, honestly, the better that you uh, have collaboration within your team, uh, the better you will have that uh, response and whatever you're trying to do uh, to get to your goal. So, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's a, you, you got my wheel spinning a little bit too, even thinking about my own teams. But kind of going to your other point, and I'll just kind of switch over and offer this up to Arantxa. Like at the same time, right? We we want to balance that work life balance. It's all throughout higher ed that many uh, institutions, at least in the technology shops, feel like we've got way more opportunities than we have resources. So on one end, you have someone come in and new, and you're excited about them. And you want to give them opportunities, but then you don't want to overwhelm them and scare them off uh, to other opportunities as soon as they get in. So, like, are we being over careful on that, Arantxa? Should we just give you the opportunities and just listen to you? Or are we are we kind of right on that? What are your thoughts? Mm, I think it might depend on the person. I think for me, I think I don't think it would hurt to ask. Like, oh, are you comfortable with what do you know? What do you want to know? What do you want to learn? Um, so I guess it depends on the person. But for me, I'm always up to learn things or shadow somebody. Um, we have a security analyst, so I've kind of been working with her and kind of, I guess, shadowing her. So I think, I know it helped me a lot, um, kind of look at real, real life, you know, cybersecurity stuff that we have on campus. So I think, just, I think it would just depend on the person, but. Yeah, I think that's fair. There's definitely an individual aspect uh, to that as well. And as part of the, you know, admittedly for some leaders, part of the challenge is when you have many individuals trying to find something that fits in with each one could be. But part of it is just having that discussion, like you said. So absolutely. I'm kind of curious to hear, Aranj and Adriel, your perspective on this. As you've been talking, um, I'm curious if there's any like myths or things that you wish your leaders or senior leaders in your institutions or just higher ed in general, like would know about young professionals, especially your age at this point in your career, like what's going on, what things 
are out there? Like what misconceptions are there that you would like to use this platform to maybe clear up? Uh, Arantia, we'll start with you. Yeah. So I think um, higher leaders, they should know that um, young professionals are generally curious. I think especially with the pandemic, um, we didn't have a lot of opportunity for internships and that hands-on kind of thing um, during that for professional development. So I think um, people have drive. I think that most people um, don't necessarily as a society believe that we have. Um, but I think because of the lack of experience, I think people generally have more drive because they're wanting to learn and continue to learn and get that real life um, experience and be able to learn that. Yeah, exactly. I'm hearing like this tension between experience and wanting to learn and feeling like, you know, how do I get the experience that you might be looking for if I'm not given opportunities to learn and to at least try? Right. Very important. What about you, Adriel? Is there any kind of myth that you would like to bust or misconception that you think is out there about young professionals right now? Oh, I actually took a spill it for me, I could say. <laughs> uh, honestly, <laughs> that's, that's, I, I guess we all have that same thought that we're all willing to grow and learn and obviously um, it's like at that stage of adulthood, right? Where we're moving up to, you know, more mature behavior, more mature lifestyle. And that's something that at least we're like, hey, well, we wanna learn from what you have to, sh to share with us, right? Like what wisdom can you share um, that can help me out either the community uh, throughout the career or even your lifestyle? Um, things like that so yeah yeah definitely i'm hearing that y'all are hungry to learn mm -hmm. <laughs> is that fair okay you both are smiling yeah. i agree <laughs> <laughs> maybe flipping this on its head just putting you know the other side of the coin on this what do you look for in like leadership or management or teams if there's like one thing that you could pick that is like a non-negotiable for you when you're looking for a, a new role, a team, a person, a manager, like what kind of skill or trait or um, thing is that? Maybe Adriel, if you're willing to continue. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely continue. Um, I think putting the team first is something that I look at a management and leadership position, try to see, you know, are you putting the team first and how are you helping them get to your goal as an organization, right? And uh, yeah, that's something that I like resonate a lot with. That's great. What do you mean by putting the team first? Like, what does that look like tangibly? Is there one thing that really like resonates with you or that's really important for you to see? I would, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about just the process and what it is, right? And the leadership position and things like that. Um, it could be one thing, let's just name it. It's just that, uh, that self-improvement within the team, right? Having that self-improvement, whether it is existing uh, relationships, processes, or whatever, having that self-improvement and helping every single person, you know, grow in that area, at least throughout the career is something that one, one opportunity that you can provide there. Um, and obviously it gets, you know, specific ones to each person, right? Each person has its own go, their own goes and things like that. But um, yeah, just self-improvement. Yeah, that's a good one. Builds on self-awareness and just lifting everyone up. Yeah, that's great. What about you, Arantxa? I think I would say I would want manager to be able to push me to really like teach me how to do this or, oh, I think you can do this very well and kind of push me out of the, my boundaries a little bit, but also being able to, okay, I've pushed you, but how can I help you? You know, um, what happened here? If something goes wrong, oh, you did very well, but how can I help you? And help you grow in that way. Yeah, it sounds like you you both are saying, hey, we want to learn. And on top of that, 
we really want to improve ourselves and we care enough about this and value this that we expect that from our teams and our leaders. Is that fair to say? I think so. I see both of you smiling and nodding vigorously. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely here and challenge us, but don't forget to support us also. And so, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I'm going to flip it a little bit more now. Sarah flipped it to the other side. I'm going to flip it back to now. We're now going to talk like colleague to colleague or maybe the incoming class of the next generation of new higher ed uh, workers, right? So what tip, Arantxa, I'm going to start with you. What tip would you give to someone incoming to the field about to step into your shoes? Like what, what's the one tip you would give them coming in? I would say... I'm, I'm going back to learn, learn as much as you can, um, but also be able to to find things that suit what your goals are and your roles, but also, I guess these are two tips, but also persevere. I know that the job market's also kind of, you know, funky right now, but I think persevere, pl- keep doing what you're doing, you know, uh, someone out there is gonna, you know, take a chance on you and I think they'll be able to grow a lot. Absolutely. Adrian, what about you? Yeah, I definitely agree with Raksha. Um, I mean to say, make the best out of the opportunities you're given. Um, just realize that you have a purpose and whatever you're facing, just don't give up. Keep going. You know, keep persevering and you'll get there. So that's my advice for you. <laughs> wow. In the episode right there, those two tips. Yeah. That's <laughs> Well, I was actually going to say, you know, I think I think that's a great way to kind of transition and close this out. And one new thing that we're trying in this podcast, and I hope you're willing to indulge us, um, we'd like to hear from you to end this out. What is one key takeaway message or lesson that you would like to leave our audience with? Arash, I'll start with you. Mm, I think that's a good question. Um, I would say... Again, persevere, try your best, um, but also take care of you. I know that work-life balance is very important, so work hard while you work, but also work hard to take care of yourself. And I think if you're feeling good, I think you'll do well professionally and um, be able to grow, I guess, in a faster faster, faster pace um, if you were to you know, feel good and feel confident and feel... Uh, secure with yourself um but i think that's my biggest tip thank you great message and adriel what is your last message that you'd like to share with our audience my tip is ask questions and reach out for help Um, there's people out that are out there wanting to help you wanting to interact with you um, even get to know you so uh, you go ahead, take that next step, uh, reach out to people, ask for questions, uh, ask questions. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you both so much. This has been just such an enlightening episode. I really appreciate you sharing your perspectives and joining us today on the show. Uh, Wes, any final words? Not just a plus one to the thanks. You, oh, I've, I've taken some notes off to the side for me to even consider for myself with my own staff and team. So uh, Rancho Adriel, thank you so much for joining us and, and dropping that knowledge. Thank you for having me. Yep, thank you.